Something I think that gets overlooked a lot is the ability to record your gameplay. Aside from making videos like this and live streaming, recording yourself playing can actually be super helpful when trying to improve at the game because there's only so much information you can learn in the middle of a song while you're playing it. Being able to review footage can reveal so much about where you keep missing or help you realize that your finger placement might be way off. So today I want to go over some recording setups for different types of budgets and hopefully you guys can start recording too. But before we get into that, I just want to quickly introduce myself. Hi, my name is Jeff or you can call me Lao Loser. I don't really have a preference on what you guys call me, it's not that important. But what is important is that I love rhythm games. And my goal here on YouTube is to get you guys to love them too. So if you have an idea or topic you'd want to hear me talk about, feel free to let me know in a comment down below and I'll try my best to explain it. Anyways, let's get back onto the main topic. The first method I want to talk about is probably the easiest and cheapest way to record yourself, but it's also the most limiting in my opinion. And that is to use the built-in screen recording on your device. Most modern phones and tablets have a way for them to record the screen. For Apple products, you just have to swipe down on the top right and tap on the record icon, and it'll begin recording in a few seconds. And you just do the same thing to stop recording, and the video will be saved in your Photos app. I would assume Android devices have a similar process to screen recording as well. Let's ask a fellow SekiTuber, Billiam, how it's done on an Android tablet. Hi Jeff, it's Billiam. And yes, you are correct. Simply swipe down to access the quick panel and look for the screen recorder icon. You can start and stop the recording at any time. If you cannot find the button, check if you can locate it in here and the quick panel. You can now share your best gameplay to all your friends. In the off chance that you cannot find a screen recorder, you can always download one from the Play Store. And that's been it for me. Back to you, Jeff. The advantages of this method is that you get a clear picture of the gameplay. So if you want to record an autoplay of the song, you can play it back slower and be able to practice certain songs. Or if you're trying to show off your cards or your main team, this is a fantastic solution for that. But then the downsides to screen recording is that you aren't able to see your hands, which plays a huge part in learning where you're making mistakes. And you're also at the mercy of how much storage is left on your device. But if this is your only option, it's not bad. You can definitely record your own videos and edit them through CapCut or something similar, or just straight up upload them raw to social media if you want. The next method is using a separate phone. Now, this is mainly for people who play on a tablet and therefore have their phone freed up. But you can also borrow a phone from someone else, whether it's a sibling or a friend, the point is, you're just using the phone as a lightweight camera. Probably the easiest method I've seen people do is to get a stack of books or a stack of something to elevate your phone, and then you can put something on top to weigh it down so it doesn't move or fall. Now, it's not the prettiest solution, but it does get the job done. You can also upgrade this setup a little bit by using a clothes hanger and laying it across two stacks and then positioning your phone in the middle with the camera pointed down. And if you have a small budget, you can upgrade this even further and get a phone tripod mount. And you can even pair this with a clamp. This one I have is from Small Rig. But a quick search on Amazon, you can probably find some cheap bundles that include the two together. This way, you can basically mount your phone onto anything and be able to record yourself. So what are some advantages with using your phone? Well, phone cameras nowadays have really good quality video. Like, you don't really have to fiddle around with any of the settings or mess with the lighting. Most of the time, the image that comes out of your phone is perfect right off the bat. Another advantage is that once you're done recording, you can review it immediately and check if you want to redo it or call it good right then and there. As well as being able to edit and upload right from your phone. But then the downsides to using your phone is that it can stop recording for a number of reasons. Whether you get a phone call, uh, the phone overheats, your storage becomes full, or just low battery notifications. This is probably the most cost efficient method I'm going to be talking about. And usually it's enough to satisfy most people's needs. 
Now, the next method I'm going to talk about is probably way overkill if you're just trying to review your gameplay for mistakes. But if you're looking to create content and want to up your quality, you can use a dedicated camera. Similar to using a phone, there's a ton of different ways to mount a camera to record what you need. When I'm filming skits and need to record gameplay footage, I'll mount my camera out here onto a C-stand using a ball head tripod mount. This lets me get an overhead shot of my iPad and I can adjust the height super easily. But if you have a lighter camera setup, you can just as easily use one of these clamps like we did for when we were mounting phones. The advantage to this setup is that there's less interruptions for your recordings. Yes, cameras can still overheat and stop or even shut off, but that only happens in some severe situations. If you're just shooting some Project Sakai stuff, it's very unlikely it'll affect you. Filling up storage is also a bit easier to manage compared to your phone. When I used to record my videos on my phone, I would constantly be filling up the storage, and if I still haven't gotten all the footage I needed, I'd have to go through all my photos and look for stuff I don't need anymore, then delete, and then so on and so forth until the end of my session. Most cameras nowadays will show you how much recording time you have left on your memory cards, so you can sort of plan out how long you can record for, and even if you do fill up your storage, you can just swap out the memory cards for a new one and get back to recording. Now some disadvantages. First off, it's expensive. <laughs> And despite having enough storage to record a decent amount of time, the major drawback is usually battery life. Video recording is notorious for eating up battery life, and spare batteries are going to be more expensive than buying spare memory cards. And finally, the last method I want to talk to you about is my main setup. This is what I use to record the majority of my YouTube videos, along with what I use to stream. And it's essentially just a webcam going into my PC. But let me break it down for you. My hand cam webcam here is mounted onto the bottom of my monitor via one of the small rig clamps I showed you earlier. And I have it pointed straight down at my desk. And this goes straight into a USB port on my PC. And then on my PC, I have that webcam feed going into OBS, which is a free open source program that lets you record and live stream. Now, at this point, it's already enough for most people's needs, but on top of that, I have a USB-C hub plugged into my iPad, and that's where I get my direct audio feed, along with an HDMI feed that goes into a capture card, and both go directly into my PC. So I can have clean direct audio from the iPad, as well as a screen capture of my gameplay. And then I also have a face cam webcam off to the side, also going into my PC which I have arranged here at the end of my video. Altogether, I have this really long video I record in case I ever need to do a face cam reaction to something or if you need to see a clear view of the screen. Otherwise, I just crop it down to the hand cam, which is what you see 90% of the time. Anyways, that's just a basic rundown of my setup. If you guys want a more detailed breakdown of how I record my videos, let me know in a comment down below. But now let's get into some of the advantages. With this setup, I just hit record and I can basically go on for hours. You're really just at the mercy of how big your hard drive is. So for external storage, um, I have a one terabyte SSD right here. And then this one right here is about two terabytes. And then in the back here, this is about eight terabytes. This hard drive is also eight terabytes. And then this one in the back is my newest one. It's about 12 terabytes. So I'm literally good on storage for a long time if all I did was Project Sakai content. And just because of how I have everything arranged, I never have to set up or break down anything. With the phone method, for example, eventually I'll have to put everything away and I kind of need my phone back. But with this, I can just leave it how it is. And whenever I want to record something, I just plug in my iPad open up OBS and hit record. But then some disadvantages. This setup needs you to have a PC or some type of computer to plug everything into. And I know this isn't an issue for a good number of people, but it could be a struggle for those who have to share their computer with others or just don't have a computer at all. And all the setup on the PC side is a nightmare if you have no experience with any audio visual stuff. Like I've spent months getting this setup to where it is now, tinkering with settings and adjusting values day after day trying to find something that works for me. And to be completely honest, 
I'm still not 100% satisfied, so I'm probably still going to keep tweaking it here and there. Anyways, some final thoughts. If your sole reason to record yourself is to figure out where you're messing up, just record yourself with your phone, or borrow someone else's phone for a few minutes. It doesn't have to be super fancy. And even if you're just recording for a TikTok or a YouTube video, a phone recording should be way more than enough. But if you're looking to take content creating more seriously and want to upgrade your setup, I would recommend looking into the webcam and OBS method. I really don't recommend buying a dedicated mirrorless or a DSLR camera just for the sole purpose of making Project Sakai videos, unless you already have one at your disposal, then go ahead, dude. It's your camera. Do whatever you want with it. Anyways, that's all I have for today. I feel like I yapped on for an eternity. But if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and let me know in a comment down below. I know this one was a little different than my usual stuff, but don't worry, I have some more gameplay related videos coming up. So if you haven't already subscribed, consider doing that so you don't miss any of the uploads when they come out. Thank you guys so much for watching and here's a video YouTube thinks you might enjoy.